you were telling me about the fee so there's some scholarship available or you guys have already taken care of the fees not the scholarship but i would say that our fees are quite competitive and reasonable okay so for our diploma in civil engineering program because it, it is it is a two year yep. program so the first year would be at around 19000 plus insurance yeah second year would be around 10000 plus insurance okay total of more or less 30000 okay um IT level 5 and IT level 7 will have the same fee at 16000 mm-hmm. 628 total fee inclusive of insurance okay perfect Hello everyone, we have got Julian with us and she is heading the marketing for International College of Auckland. She's been an international student herself and she's trying to help other students to come to New Zealand and make a career here. Yeah. So over to, to you Julian, please share what did you study, where did you study from, jobs you did so that the people watching this will get a confidence that Yes, there are possibilities, opportunities, yeah. and things which can happen after studies. So over to you. Yeah. So my name is Julian. Um, I am from the Philippines. I have been in New Zealand since 2016. All right. I've studied. I, of course, I also came here on a student visa. Mm-hmm. On, I studied during that time uh, a level seven diploma in business. Mm-hmm. And I also studied it here in ICA, the International College of Auckland. So as you, based on that, you yeah. can say that, you know, ICA has been in the industry for very long time now. Okay. So as ICA was established in 2001. Mm-hmm. So um, now it's more than 20 years that we've been in this industry. Okay. So my first job when I was a student was actually at Pack and Save. It's a supermarket job. Yeah. So where I was, um, it, was it was my part-time job. Uh-huh. So, you know, because students are allowed to work 20 hours per week. Yep. And then while I was um, working in Pack and Save, ICA gave me the opportunity to work with them as a receptionist. Oh, okay. So I started at front desk. Oh, okay. So doing reception jobs and then slowly learning how to do student support mm-hmm. and then eventually shifted towards um, kind of like a student support admin and marketing thing. Okay. Um, so so basically, because I came here from the Philippines as a fresh graduate, so basically no work experience at all. Oh. So I so basically, you can say that I started my career here in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Uh, my first job here in New Zealand. Okay. And my first corporate job here in New Zealand. Oh, nice. So with an ICA. So um, I from 2016, I stayed with ICA for six years. Okay. Um, so I left ICA at 2023 to explore, you know, probably other opportunities mm-hmm. out there. But um, come this year, just I think around February, I came back. Okay. And I was working as a marketing manager with them. Oh, amazing. Amazing. So you have been a student, then working part-time, full-time. And now you're helping students make better decisions in their study abroad journey. Definitely. And it's also because um, during my time, I would say that, well, New Zealand is more discreet, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, but this time it's being, it's being, it's now, it's now one of the popular countries where students yeah. are choosing to go to. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, during my time when I was a student, because I'm from the Philippines during that time, I didn't, my classmates or my class didn't really have a Filipino student. Oh, nice. So it was quite a, um, it was quite new mm-hmm. to me, but it was also very interesting because I get to, you know, experience other cultures, meet other people from other cultures, such as mm. in Japan, China, yeah. India, Nepal, yeah. this kind of thing. So it's quite eye opening for someone who came from, you know, the Philippines. Oh, Amazing. So would you like to share some enriched experience you had while you were a student, which will, um, which kind of motivated you to stay back here? Well, for New Zealand, I would say New Zealand is a very beautiful country. Yeah. Um, I would always say that it is a wonderful mix of a city life and a nature life. Because, mm-hmm. for example, even here in Auckland, Auckland is the biggest, I would say, the busiest city here in New Zealand. Yep. But if you 
if you drive out of Auckland, say maybe about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you'd be somewhere in a totally different place. Yeah. You would be part of nature, yeah. you know? So a 30 minute drive would lead you to a beach or to a hiking forest or something like that. So it's a beautiful mix of, of city and nature. That's one thing. Um, the second thing is I think the work-life balance here is really good. Mm -hmm. um, coming from uh, an Asian country in general, where it's always busy and work-life balance is not really a thing, mm -hmm. I would say. Because, yeah. you know, when you study, when you study back in the Philippines, for example, yeah. or in India, yeah. your timetable would always be Monday to Friday, 7 to 5. Yeah, not 7 to 5, but at least um, 9 to 5, 9 to 6, yeah. Oh, in India, it's yeah. like that? Yeah. Uh, because in Philippines, it's 7 to 5. Yeah, so it's not 10 hour shift, it's more like 9 hour shift, but you're at school? No, 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 I'm not talking about school, I'm talking work life balance at work. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, in school, it starts from 7 and ends up at like 2, 2 30, and then you take some rest and then go for tuition classes. So, oh, yeah, okay. So, maybe because in the Philippines it's quite different yeah. for us, um, in school. In terms of schooling, mm -hmm. okay, in terms of schooling, um, we would always have schedules from seven to five p.m. Okay. After five p.m., it's tuition classes. Oh yeah. So it's oh. quite it's quite a long long day. day yeah. 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 So it that's why it was quite new when I came here in New Zealand. I think... During that time, we only had two days oh. of classes, oh. but it's full load. So from nine to I think nine to seven. Oh, okay. Time, but it's only two days. Uh. So it actually gives you the time to. To work and to rest and yeah. to do your do assignments, yeah, yeah, correct. Um, but you know, time has changed. Yeah. So, for example, here in ICA, our students are only in class for three to four days a week. Okay. So nine to four, mm -hmm. and then nine to four for two days, maybe nine to twelve in one day. Okay. You know, it's still a work-life yeah. balance. Yeah. Day. True. But in terms of like working in a professional setting, mm -hmm. um, when I say with work-life balance, you know, we go to we go to work at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. We finish at five thirty, five to five thirty. Yeah. That's the, that's finish. When mm -hmm. you go home, you don't think of anything else. You don't think of work. You just rest. Yeah. And um, I would say that working here in New Zealand, they're very family oriented. Mm -hmm. So they would understand if you have family commitments. Mm -hmm. personal commitments that you cannot um come to work or yeah, in the exactly. class yeah. yeah exactly so so that's two of the main things that i really like about new zealand mm -hmm. probably the third thing would be the culture yeah. as well so kiwis um the local people they're quite friendly mm -hmm. um like when you're when you live in a suburb and you you know you just go out of your house and you meet someone they would normally greet you you know good morning yeah. how are you today something yeah. like that so yeah. It's a sense of ease yeah. as well. Um, yeah, so basically those are the main things. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So how is the uh, job market these days in New Zealand? Is it tough to get a job, like a full-time job? Or is it easy? What do uh, you think the, the recent change in government? Is it going to help people get better jobs and more opportunities? Or it is going to be tough? Like honestly speaking, yeah, yeah. Honestly speaking, I think looking for a job is always tough. Yeah, you know, regardless where you are. Um, in recent changes, um, definitely it's been more challenging mm -hmm. compared to years back. Yeah, but I would say that there's still something mm -hmm. out there. There's still some job opportunities out there. So it's just a matter of trying. Yeah, and not really losing your motivation to yeah. try. Yeah, true. Yeah, but again, I mean, looking for a job is always difficult, is always challenging, mm -hmm. but there will always be something for you. Yeah, you know? perfect. So let's talk about the programs because the students who are watching this, they would be keen to know what all programs you guys have to offer for international students. Yeah. I've listed three programs here, uh, Diploma in Civil Engineering, which is two years, mm -hmm. level six. Then we have NZ Diploma IT, level five. And then we also have Diploma in Network and System Admin. Yeah, so actually our Diploma in Civil Engineering, it's a level seven program. Oh, it's a level seven. Yeah. I'm really sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is a level seven, seven. Program. Perfect. Yeah. And it's a two years program. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I would say that for ICA, our main course is Diploma in Civil Engineering. Okay. Um, just to give you a brief background about yeah. how we came to offer, you know, civil engineering. Sure. Um, previously, ICA offered courses in general, uh, general programs such as you know, business, healthcare, uh, project management. Mm -hmm. And then come 2017, that's when we first started to offer engineering programs. Okay. So we also used to have diploma in electrical engineering and mechanical engineering. Okay. But because of the recent changes, mm -hmm. immigration, mm -hmm. um. And of course, the industry itself. Yeah, we have decided to just mainly focus on our main program, which now, which is the Diploma in Civil Engineering Level Seven program. Okay. Uh, because number one, it does meet the industry's requirements. Mm -hmm. And um, construction has always been a booming industry here in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say construction is slow during this period of time after COVID because during COVID of course construction has uh, boomed industry, a lot uh, actually no the no. industry has been you know just similar to other industries it became quite a standstill okay the construction but um, and it really took a massive hit during COVID because of course you know borders are closed um, so you know projects are not projects came into a standstill mm -hmm. but I would say during you know it's slowly recovering the industry is slowly recovering mm -hmm. so and I mean, diplomas, I mean, civil engineering, building and construction and in general has always been an immigration's demand list. Yeah. We could say green list. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm not an immigration advisor, so I can't really comment much on that. Yeah. But yeah, so that's why our main program this time is a diploma in civil engineering program. Okay. It is a two year, two academic years program. Yeah. The reason why we say it's two academic years is because it's more or less two academic years. Mm -hmm. um, so roughly at about 80 to 83 weeks um, full-time study. Okay. Uh, so it is of 240 credits. Students would have to study um, 12 papers that ranges from level 5 to level 7. Okay. So it starts, they have to study from the basic, mm -hmm. like engineering maths or engineering drawings. Yeah. And it gradually um, goes to, uh, like for example, courses in that land information, engineering survey, surveying, mm -hmm. land information systems. Yeah. Um, then you go to level seven papers such as timber and steel, geotechnical earthquake engineering, and then th to cap their papers off, they do a final project. Okay. Uh, what I would say is that what makes our papers unique is that, you know, we have those subjects such as um, geotech engineering. Mm. Yeah. Well, of course, uh, it is important for the students to know the landscape of New Zealand, considering that um, certain parts of New Zealand is prone to earthquakes. Yeah. So that's where um, that paper will come in. Mm. Your knowledge yep. and and the subject, I mean, the knowledge that you gain from that subject will come in. Because yep. as much as possible, we try our best, um, our academic team tries their best to update the contents of the course to make it relevant to the current New Zealand building and construction code, mm. construction code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then um, our, for each individual papers that mm -hmm. the students would do, um, the academic team would usually, as much as possible, arrange site visits okay. or industry visits. Mm -hmm. um, or bring in industry guest lecturers mm -hmm. even to talk about how is it like uh, to work in the construction industry. Exactly. How is it like to be to work in a construction industry? Mm -hmm. And with the site visits, um, so for let me just give you an example. So for example, they they have a paper called Timber and Steel. Okay. So during that paper, their program leader might arrange them to go for a residential site visit. Okay. Where the construction phase is at uh, the timber and steel structures. Oh. So the students would have a look at how um the how the timber and steels are incorporated into building that residential house here in New Zealand. Okay. Yeah. So this that gives the students, you know, exposure mm -hmm. and a chance to, you know, talk to the industry site manager or project manager on how this building came to be or uh -huh. what's the progress on how or how is the progress of this building. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Because um, like India, you 99% of houses are brick. Uh, brick and mortar mm. they are not from timber and steel like exactly. they might use steel for the pillars and yeah. the roof but um, they use bricks to build the houses yeah. and here it's more wooden so they would need to have that experience and exposure that how to do all the calculations and Correct. how to build the house it's the same with the philippines we used um, to we used to um 
I mean, for construction wise, most of our materials are made of bricks. Okay. Yes, and bricks and mortars. But yeah. it's but, more more like an Asia thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 But um, when I came here, yeah. So when I had a look at you know at those construction sites, most of them start yeah. from you know timber, oh, okay. timber and steel. Oh, okay, yeah. perfect. Yes, Julian. So uh, let's talk about Brazilian Diploma IT Level Five. So since it's a diploma leading to bachelor's, a pathway program. Yeah. What all it does it cover, and what pathways a student can get? Okay. So the New Zealand Diploma in Information Technology Level Five uh, is a I would explain it as an entry level program. Okay. Because students who have completed a student and wants to go start their career in an IT field, they can. Um, start doing this by um, entering into our IT Level 5 program. Mm-hmm. So upon completion of this program, yeah. students, for, for ICA, our pathway available for this program is with Griffith University Australia. All then. So when students have completed IT Level 5 with us, yeah. they have the option to move to Australia. Of course, they have to apply their um, own visas and everything yeah. for Australia. But um, they after completing IT Level 5 with us, they can do Year 2 and Year 3 in Bachelor's in IT at Griffith University. Okay. Um, and either their uh, Nathan campus or their Gold Coast campus. Okay. They, they make Nathan campus is in Brisbane. Okay. Yeah. But if they don't want to work, I mean, if they don't want to go to Australia to do their Bachelor's, yeah. because IT Level 5 is a New Zealand diploma, yeah. they can apply for cross-credits at institutes who who offers a bachelor's in information technology program in New Zealand. In New Zealand, yeah, so they can at least uh, get a uh, cross credits for either one one year or one point uh, five year. Okay. So they can only complete their bachelor's degree within two years or um, say two and a half years. Both, both. And what about this uh, diploma in network and system admin level seven? So the diploma in networks and systems administration is a level seven program. Yeah. So it is a program um, where where because because it is a level seven program. Yeah. We would require students to have at least a background in IT or a relevant field. Okay. So like a three year diploma or a bachelor's degree. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it is an advanced program. Okay. So it is. Of course, higher and higher compared to our level five program, uh-huh. um, and it specializes in networks and systems admin and deals with cloud computing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically, those uh, specialized specialized um, subjects. Oh, perfect. So, and you were telling me about the fee. So there, there's some scholarship available, or you guys have already taken care of the fees. Yeah, the... not not the scholarship, but I would say that our fees are quite competitive and reasonable. Okay. So for our diploma in civil engineering program, because it is it is a two year yeah. program. So the first year would be at around nineteen thousand plus insurance. Yeah. Second year would be around ten thousand plus insurance. Okay. Total of more or less thirty thousand. Okay. Um, IT level five and IT level seven will have the same fee at sixteen thousand uh-huh. six hundred and twenty-eight total fee inclusive of the insurance. Okay, perfect. Perfect. I think that pretty much covers everything and yeah. it's very informative and I'm really thankful to you yeah. that yeah. you gave me the opportunity to speaking to you and sharing all the knowledge about the programs, about your own journey and everything. So really, really thankful to you. So I think I think um, journey in New Zealand it will always be an up and down kind of thing. Yep. So it's just more of you know being resilient and really trying your best. Yep. So at least at least whatever happens, whatever may happen. Yep. You can always tell yourself that you did you your best. And exactly. Correct. Yeah. Perfect. So on that note, uh, we'll take your leave, and I'm really really thankful to you. Thank you for Again. having us. Thank you for having ICA. Thank you for having me. Oh. And for the opportunity to share to our potential students and yeah. future students, yeah. ICA, our courses, and hopefully we'll, you know, come and see them very soon. <laughs> Perfect. Definitely. We'll try our best to give you the best students oh, possible. Thank you so much.